Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another episode of the show. And uh, so this is another one of those kind of quick shows, I guess. Uh, it's really still set up, but uh, this is a Sunday night episode, so um, I'm really recording it the night before I release it. And um, so I'm not going to go through the whole setup. Uh, you know, Sunday is the day I work uh, a, a morning shift or a lunch shift at the day job, and um, then I come home and rest a little bit, have some dinner. Uh, tonight, watch the All-Star Game. Did all of you watch that? Yeah, it's all right, you know. I, I don't normally get to watch the All-Star Game. I'm usually working during it, so this is one of the first times I got to watch it. And it was more like it was on the background more than anything else because I'm on the computer and kind of chilling. But um, anyway, uh, I have to say the introductions weren't that good. I mean, 2009, Shaq, Jabberwocky. Yeah. Anyway, um, so let's get into the wines here. Uh, so I got two wines. So the other day I went to my local HEB, which I can't remember the last time I bought wine for the show from that HEB. Um, and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to buy some wine. And I bought three whites and three reds. Um, we're only doing one of those wines uh, today. So we're going to do the white. And uh, I'll go through kind of how... Now, this one I, di I did buy because of the name. Uh, I bought two of them because of either the name or I'd seen it enough recently that I thought I will go ahead and try it. And then the other four, I literally used a random number generator and picked them. So, um, anyway, they're all like in the... I think the most expensive was $11.98. But this one here, this is the Procrastinate. I like the name. Uh, the Procrastinate Sauvignon Blanc uh, from Monterey, 2012. Now... This is part of the D.C. Flint Master of Wine Selections and uh, bought it, again, at HEB for $7.98. And uh, now HEB is one of those, you know, it's, it's the local, it's really about the only regular grocery store in San Antonio. I mean, yeah, Walmart has groceries and Target has groceries and there are some other like smaller grocery stores, you know, you have, well, not World Market, so we have Whole Foods and that type of stuff. But as far as like a major national chain, or I'm sorry, a major chain is kind of a local chain, HEB's it. <clears throat> anyway, um, so like I said, I, I went ahead and bought it from there, and um, I was going to go somewhere else with that. But this is a wine that I bought really because of the name. Uh, it's a Sauvignon Blanc, a Camarado Sauvignon Blanc. And... Um, there really isn't much info about this wine. Uh, there isn't a actual website about it. Uh, if you try to Google procrastinate wine, you're going to get uh, a uh, you're going to get a winery that produces a wine called the Procrastinator. Um, the DC Flint Master of Wine Selections website is pretty basic. It just kind of lists what they have. Uh, there is a section that talks about the WSET certifications, that's the Wine, Wine and Spirit Education Trust. That's kind of the path to take to go Master of Wine. Um, though, as far as I know, there's no requirement that you have to get a diploma or, or higher from that organization, but it kind of helps if you've gone that path to go to the, you know, to get your Master of Wine certification. Um, all I can tell you is from the website that this is 100% California. Um, it says Monterey, so good percentage of the grapes have to come from Monterey. I think it's 85% in California if you're using that uh, appellation. Um, and that's it. They got a lot of wines. And I think the last time I had any update on the website was last year sometime. So, but they've been around for quite a while. That's about all I got on the wine. I'm not really a fan of, you know, the uh, of, of wines that don't, you can't really find anything about, but... You know, sometimes they're pretty good. So let's get right into it. Uh, just typical Sauvignon Blanc. Helps if I had 
polish the glass. Though I don't think it really shows up on camera, too, you know, too much about the the water spots on there. It's a clean glass. It's just got water spots on it. Pretty typical Sauvignon Blanc. Very pale. All right, right off the nose, you know, really good nose. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, the typical Sauvignon Blanc nose. Uh, a little bit of gooseberry, aka cat pee. Um, not really that much, but really just um, a citrus type of aroma. Um, not really, really heavy lemon and lime, but you got that lemon and lime type of aroma. Um, a little bit of floral. Definitely a characteristic um, Sauvignon Blanc nose, kind of grassy too. So if you, if you stuck your nose in this on, on a blind tasting, you're, you're gonna go down the Sauvignon Blanc path pretty quickly and hope that you're right. Uh, Cause sometimes I've had wines that I thought were, that weren't, but this is fairly typical of what you'll get out of Sauvignon Blanc. Maybe even a little cantaloupe rind. I really actually like the nose. I mean, I, I like the Sauvignon Blanc nose in general. It's, 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 a, it's a nose, it's an aroma that I would, I would, I like to smell. So when I decide to drink the rest of this wine, I'll probably smell it a lot as I'm drinking it. Yeah, it's just, I think it's a great nose. I like it. <laughs> to me, it's a somewhat unmistakable uh, Sauvignon Blanc palette. Uh, very acidic, very high acidity. Um, kind of really rips the tongue. Um, still, a lot of that lemon lime um, palette uh, it's still okay it really really the, the the palette and the nose are very much in sync they're very much the same you're gonna get almost exactly the same thing on the palate as you do on the nose but heavy on the lemon and lime Not as much gooseberry on the palate, but very much on the citrus note, a hint of the cantaloupe part, um, even a little floral, even a little bit of floral um, to it. No oak on it. This I'm sure is 100% stainless steel, probably no oak at all. Um, it feels a little hot. I did, this is a chilled wine. I did have it in the refrigerator for a little bit before, uh, like watching the last quarter of, of the uh basketball game so I would chill a little bit. Um, I forgot what the, what's gonna call it was, the alcohol on it. 13 and a half, nothing, you know, nothing outrageous. But feels like I get a little bit of alcohol, so that's about the only real negative I have of it. Um, it's a good wine, I like it, I definitely like it. If you saw this wine in the store, I would say get it. Um, it's gonna give you everything that you want out of a Sauvignon Blanc. Um, it's, I wouldn't say there's anything distinctive about it, but it's definitely good. So if you like this style of wine, if you like uh, Sauvignon Blancs, I would totally get it. I, I think it'd be a great refreshing summer wine. Um, you know, the thing that's just kind of disappointing is that I would like to have something, you know, on it. Now let, let's see what it says in the back. Cause I don't, you know, I don't really read the back. Aromic with sweet notes of lemon and lime and lemongrass. I had to say grass, didn't I? Um, uh, grapefruit. Yeah. Okay, peach, no, citrus peel. That might be what I'm calling cantaloupe rind. Uh, da, 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 da. And they talk about pairing it with flounder or sole, gulf oysters, spicy venison sausage, or grilled eggplant portobello and golden peppers. Venison sausage. Hmm, interesting. Oh, they even said something about tangerines. Oh yeah, finish your tangerines. Uh, you know, I'm not a big seafood fan, so I'm just gonna assume that that's gonna be good on the seafood side. I would just, if I was recommending, I would totally recommend it with that, but I don't like seafood, so I can't tell you that I like that 
but I know how the pairing will go because I've done it. Uh, I like the venison idea. That might be kind of neat. And I guess the spiciness, I don't really think it's that sweet of a wine, but I think it would help with something that was spicy. Because I'm sitting there thinking like, you know, like spicy Italian sausage in like an Alfredo type of, or carbonara type of uh, uh, sauce, and you add some spicy peppers to it, you know, like, uh, not pepper, spicy um, sausage to it, I think that would be excellent. So you got the creaminess that the acid can cut through. Uh, you've got the fruit type of uh, flavors that can help with, you know, not necessarily a sweet wine, but that, that appearance of a little bit of sweetness uh, to help with the spiciness. Yeah, I think it'd be great. That's pretty good. All right, so um, we're going to move on to wine number two. All right, so we're going to move on to wine number two. Now, before I do that real quick, I want to, um, well, actually, there's a couple things I want to do. Um, <laughs> first thing I want to do is I want to correct uh, an error from not last week's show, but from two weeks ago about Stag's Leap. So um, the wine that I reviewed is not from the Stag's Leap that won in the Judgment of Paris 1976. It's a different Stag's Leap. However, you know, after all these years, the two, the two owners are, uh, I believe, pretty good friends and all that, and they've, there's, there's something about you know, where the apostrophe falls, either between, you know, before the S or after the S, and then, of course, there's the whole Stag's Leap AVA. So it adds confusion, and I feel bad because I really knew about all this, but I just, I don't know. I kind of forgot about it. And as I'm researching it, I thought, well, then there's something about the apostrophe, and I thought it was more about the AVA versus the winery, not remembering there's a second winery there. So uh, so I want to thank, um, you know, I'm going to have to, I usually turn off the Wi-Fi on the, uh, on the computer here, but I do want to give a shout out to the person that, um, that pointed it out to me. Here we go. Pull up the email, and it is Paul Stevens. So thank you, Paul. I really appreciate that uh, for fixing that, or at least pointing it out to me. Um, and then there was one more thing I wanted to bring up. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So also, uh, from the last show, from the last show, we talked about Weinster. Now, they watched the review, and they favored it, and they, repo they retweeted it. Awesome. Um, and uh, I did post uh, as a post thing on, on the actual web page and I think in the descriptions for the video that my dad tried two of the three wines and we actually had the Pinot Noir tonight. I know it's a while, but it still was drinking pretty good. And actually, I think I liked it a little bit better. Um, but anyway, they, uh, they contacted me about a discount code. So you can go there. And if I remember right, the discount code is just 1337wine, which honestly, I think that's from Twitter they told it to me. But um, if you go there and you put in the discount code 1337wine, you will get, and I know I should have had all this set up, but let's look at them real quick. Weinster. Okay. Uh, belated discount code for you and your viewers to use $25 off with code 1337WINE. That's a pretty good discount. So check them out. I'll have a link right here and then a link on the website to go check them out. Um, I do plan on checking out some of their other wines so that um, so I can try them out. Uh, my dad really liked the, the, the Cab and he liked the Merlot. So like I said, you know, even though I wasn't a huge fan of them, I didn't think they were bad wines. Um, uh, he liked them, and that just goes to show you, just you know, just because I don't, I wasn't a huge fan of something, somebody else might like it. The other way around, you know, I might like something a lot, and somebody else might go, oh, uh, like the story about when I went to New Jersey. I love these, the, there are these wines that I thought they were awesome, and everybody else at the table was like, yeah, these aren't good. So everyone has their own likes and dislikes. I do equate music all the time with wine, so uh, everyone has their, their preferences. So let's move on to the next wine finally. But I wanted to get those things out of the way. 
you know, give wine steer their plug. We've got the link and all that. And then uh, uh, thank uh, Paul for giving me that correction. So that's awesome. All right, so we're going to do this one. This is called, um, now this wine is a gift. I didn't buy it. So I get my disclosure out there. Uh, it was a gift. I didn't buy it. So um, I looked up on the website for the price. So from the, from the winery, this is the Leith, not the Lyeth, the Leith Meritage 2009. Now they make other wines besides this Meritage, but this is, I believe their flagship wine. It's uh, available for $15.99 at the website. Uh, you can buy it at various stores. And I believe that it's actually a little bit cheaper at some of the other stores. I kind of saw some other uh, prices out there. They're a little bit less. But um, they actually have a website, so we can kind of talk about who they are. Um, in, they were founded in 91 uh, in Sonoma by a gentleman named Chip Leith. Okay? Um, and he had traveled in, through Bordeaux in the 70s, and he liked those wines. Um, and he decided that you know, the, the, the people in Bordeaux kind of had a good thing going with how they blend wines. Well, the problem with... Um, the U.S. law is to, to label anything a single variety or label anything with a varietal on it to call it a Cabernet Sauvignon has to be 75% Cab. Um, now the other 25 25% could be anything else, but to label it Cab, you know, Cabernet Sauvignon, it's got to be 75% Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, so what he decided was he wanted to maybe do some blending. So uh, he decided to do that, and um, he also. Uh, he said he brought on his close friend, Bill Arbois, or maybe it's not Arbois, maybe it's Arbio, because usually A-R-B-O-I-S, we Arbois, right? Uh, maybe it's Arbius, maybe it's Arbius, okay? Um, I, I read it as Arbois when I first was reading this. And uh, 25 years later, we are still dedicated to Chip's vision of making unique blends. That kind of leads me to believe that Chip maybe is not involved with winery or isn't the sole owner or maybe passed away, I'm not really sure. Probably should look to that. Um, so they call it a Meritage. Now, this Meritage has Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, Malbec, and Petit Verdot. What is a Meritage? Uh, and it's a Meritage, not a Meritage. And we'll kind of cover, we'll cover that right now. Meritage is a made-up name. So this, this group called the Meritage Alliance uh, was founded in 88 and for the purpose of creating Bordeaux-style blended wines, reds and whites. And uh, they basically had a contest on what to call it. They wanted to create a brand so they could evoke Bordeaux-style wines without, without stepping on the Bordeaux brand and call it a Bordeaux because by this point, you couldn't. Uh, they couldn't get grandfathered in like you could get those big jugs of Burgundy and Chablis. Okay, th those, <clears throat> those companies are kind of grandfathered in so they can still call them that. But if I decide to create a wine now, I can't call it Burgundy. Okay, I can't call it Chablis. Um, anyway, so they wanted to create a wine that was uh, uses the Bordeaux blending, but to evoke uh, a name that will kind of honor it without stealing basically the brand of Bordeaux. So uh, they created this, or not this, the, the word meritage was uh, picked, and it's a combination of the words merit and heritage, hence why it's called or it's pronounced meritage. Um, and then you'll see this word all over the place too. I mean, they don't own the copyright or a trademark on the word. Um, but you know, there's a very famous home builder that's called Meritage Homes. And when you see their commercials or anyone talks about them, they, they say Meritage, nobody says Meritage, but about the wine, oh, it's Meritage because it's French. No, it's not French. It's an American made up word. Um, anyway. Sorry, I got a little snarky on that. But uh, it, it really annoys me, when, especially when I see wine people or hear wine people call it Meritage. And I'm just like, no, it's not. And I'm not the best pronouncer of foreign words out there. I like Arbius, Arbois, you know. Um, but that's, that one, you know, learn it. Anyway, uh, so they were found in 1988. Um, for reds, they can use, uh, the reds can be composed of, of at least two of the following grapes. Uh, that's Cabernet Franc, Cabernet Sauvignon, Carmenere, uh, Malbec, Merlot, and Petit Verdot. Now, I always talk about the, the five Bordeaux varietals, but there really were six at one time. 
Carmenere was another varietal that was used in Bordeaux wines. Um, Carmenere and Malbec are basically not used. I don't even know how, I don't even know those really any Carmenere planted in Bordeaux anymore. There might be like very, very, very small plots. Malbec is almost gone um, in the actual Bordeaux proper. Um, but uh, those were two grapes that were used in the Bordeaux, the classic Bordeaux blend, the old school Bordeaux blends. Um, for white, they can use uh, Sauvignon Blanc, Muscadel, and Sauvignon. Okay, again, the traditional white Bordeaux grapes. Um, this wine, like I said, is Cab Merlot, Malbec, and Petit Verdot. Uh, for Emeritage, it has to be at least uh, no more than 90% of any one grape and at least two of the grapes involved uh, are there. Um, they also pay a fee. This is, this is an alliance. It's like, an, like a consortium. Um, they have to pay a fee. It's a dollar per case. Um, and they've capped the fee to $500 per vintage. So if you create more than 500 cases, uh, the most you're going to spend into is $500. And they use that to like, you know, fund the alliance and probably education and all that. They did say at first they were more concerned about protecting the name. <laughs> and then I guess over the past, I don't know, decade or so, they've been more dedicated to uh, doing education rather than trying to protect the name. Not saying they don't protect it. Like I can't, I can't just sit there and slap the word meritage on my my wine if I didn't pay into the uh, alliance. And there's uh, 26 states. Surprisingly, I kind of thought it was mostly a California. I knew it was mostly California, but I thought it was like almost all California with the occasional big four. There's 26 states that have at least one winery that that's a part of the alliance that can create a meritage wine. Uh, and I've got just like about eight or nine or 10 in Texas. Some of these I, wineries I didn't realize had a meritage and some of them I actually honestly didn't, didn't know existed. So. so all the history about it. So now let's get into the wine. I've been dying to try this wine too. Okay, so God, off the top, a little disappointing because I get that kind of smoke bomb and it should have already blown off by now. I mean, I kind of let it sit there for a while. But yeah, I really get that smoke bomb aroma off the nose. A little bit of red fruits. Sorry about the sniffles. Just really the smoke bomb is more than anything else. Again, again, a little bit of fruit, a little bit of heat from the alcohol, a little wood, not much floral on it. On the palate, some really good stuff. I mean, I got probably five or six scenes that hit me, not all at once, but kind of in succession. I still get a little smoke bomb, but it's really faint. It might blow off, okay? So maybe it's just, you know, it's a 2009. We're talking not quite five years, but at least four and a half years old. Um, I'm not sure how much aging there was in, in barrel and all that, but it's definitely seen wood. It got a little bit of hints of vanilla. So got that. Um, definitely some good red fruits, a little bit of creaminess, some good tannins. It's, it's pretty tannic. Um, in my experience, I haven't had a lot of meritages, but it seems like more than 50% of them are pretty tannic. Now, I had one that was like, it ripped my face off. I think I, think I reviewed it um, a couple years ago, Estancia. Like I had recommended that you you uh, decant it so it soften it up a little bit. It, it, it's I don't have like some specific red fruits. I I would guess kind of in that that raspberry type of family, maybe even black raspberry, is, is there's a, a, a hint of cream, of vanilla, um, 
definitely wood. You know, you're, you're getting the wood, like the cedar box on it. Um, good tannins, as in medium plus at the minimum on the tannins. Um, I said a little bit of that sulfur, that, that smoke bomb. So like I said, I'm, I'm not sure if this wine has already turned. It may be already too old. Maybe just a bad bottle. Um, it could just be, I just need to let it air out. Maybe I need to, you know, let it sit out for a little bit. Um, but I'll, I'll be drinking this later this week, um, in hopes that it'll, it'll be better. Um, I like it and I like it really more cause I think there's more potential. I, like I said, if I, if I let it air out a little bit more like decant it effectively, then it might come out being a little bit better than, than what it is right now. But, um, right now I'm kind of, it's not that I don't have a recommend for it. It's right now, it's just kind of like, well, if you see the 2009, you can get it. You might want to try a, a newer vintage. Um, I've also had experience where the first pour wasn't exactly the best. Um, so we're going to try that again. See, now that sulfur is mostly gone. I've had a lot of times my very first pour of a red wine will have that smoke bomb, but then after I pour, dump it out and pour, uh, pour it again, it's blown off. Now I'm getting more just wood and fruit rather than smoke bomb. Palette still, um, you know, medium plus to um, high, you know, um, high tannins. Um, the wood and the fruit are really hitting the palate pretty hard. Um, I don't get any smoke bomb on the palate, so that's good. So I think with this with this wine, again, really, I think it needs a little time to open up. Let it sit in the glass for 15, 20 minutes. It'll open up a little more. Maybe you've had one of those, I, I have yet to really buy my own Venturi to really, really, truly test it out. But if you had one of those, it might accelerate the aeration of it. Um, I like the wine. Um, I think for, and it's, it's, it's kind of got a juiciness to it uh, on the fruit. And really, I mean, it's got a long finish. I mean, I'm really, I mean, this is, we're talking a couple minutes into this and I'm still tasting the wine. Um, the vanilla isn't as prominent as the first, as the first sip, but it's there. I mean, I like it. I really think it needs time to open up. Uh, it's $16. Uh, I think it's priced where it needs to be. I don't think it's overpriced. I don't think it's underpriced. Um, but you have to like this style of wine. Does it take me back to Bordeaux? Not necessarily, but, um, you know, there's some good things to it. Um, I think this is a wine I'd like to explore more if I, if I could sit down for like a, like I like to do, sit down for like an hour with a wine, I think this wine over time is gonna be much better. However, I do think, and not that, not that I think it's, it's past this prime, but I do think it may have already peaked, that this particular bottle may have peaked. Um, I think it might have been a little more robust um, six months ago, a year, and it's it's. I have no reason to think that because I've never had it before. Um, maybe it still needs. Maybe it still needs development. That might be going the wrong direction. Maybe this wine needs to sit in bottle for another year or two. When I when I drink these types of wines, I don't usually. I'm just used to a wine just being right there and and being just good. Whereas sometimes I get wine like this, I might not necessarily understand whether it's a wine that needs to develop more. I, I mean, I would doubt that it's already peaked. Like I said, it's only five years old, four and a half years old. I doubt it's peaked. But, um, you know, I'd, I'd buy it again. Let's put it that way. I would probably buy a newer vintage because my feeling is I'd like it more. But like I said, maybe I should have held on to this a little longer instead of popping it on my first opportunity. Um, but, um, yeah. Okay, I think that's really going to do it. I went a little longer than I wanted to on this segment. Um, as always, I want to thank everyone for stopping by. Um, friend me up, up above. Hit the donate button over here to uh, send me a little, a few ducats. Uh, tell your friends about it. Um, 
TiVo, if, uh, yeah, my TiVo viewers. Now, you never saw the Christmas special and you didn't see the last episode. No. Yeah, the Hanson Vineyards one. Um, we're thinking that... Uh, we're thinking that it's possibly in my video descriptions that I've used what they're considering special characters like the umlaut over you for Gewürztraminer. Or I, I actually had in the description the scent sign for one cent about the shipping. Um, so we're thinking that that's been preventing the TiVo servers from uh, downloading the video from the RSS feed. So I'm gonna, we're gonna, I'm going to try to avoid doing that because all the other videos around it have downloaded just fine. Uh, I'll go to the TiVo site and they'll see it there. So if you're a TiVo subscriber, which the majority of the viewers are, and you haven't seen those videos, come to the website and watch it, or go to Blipped, or go to YouTube, or get it from iTunes, or however you want to do it. Um, hit iFu TV, man, they're, they're awesome. Um, I mean, they, they grab the YouTube video for me now, which is, I, I really love, instead of me uploading every time, I just let them know, hey, the new video is ready, and they do everything for me. So that's awesome. I'm glad they do that for me. Uh, and they've been, they've been absolutely just 100% awesome. And I do want to give Blip a shout out. I know I, I criticize them a lot. Um, and it's hard to criticize the hand that feeds you, I guess. But they're the ones that, that serve my video for free. Um, but they gave me a shout out on Twitter recently. And, and it was awesome. So hopefully they're going to give me a little more love. But uh, we'll see. Nothing else. I mean, the fact that they still host my videos and um, they didn't discontinue my stuff is, I think, thanks enough. Anyway, that's going to do it for today. I uh, hope everyone enjoyed it. Uh, episode 300 is coming up. Uh, as soon as I have details, I'll, I'll let you know. As soon as I figure out and finalize the details and exactly what I'm going to do, I'll let you know. And uh, we'll see everyone again next time. <laughs>